Welcome everyone to the Tekken 7 Paul Phoenix tutorial. My name is Joey Fury. I am a tournament player and streamer representing Equinox Gaming. I've been playing in Tekken tournaments since Tekken 5 and I am a two-time qualifier for the Tekken World Tour Global Finals. And I've also been very active as a competitor in the online tournament scene the past couple years. I am known for repping this character during the 2017 and 2018 uh, World Tours. So let's begin discussing the all-American hero, Paul Phoenix. I'm going to show you the central tools we can use to construct a very strong game plan with this character. Then I'm going to show you some staple combos which balance the factors of difficulty of execution and damage output. And lastly, we will discuss some of Paul's unique strengths and weaknesses. Let's get to it. Gotcha. Yeah. Before we start, be sure to subscribe to Dash Fight for more character guides and check out their website for all things FGC. Best moves in neutral. 1-2, left right combo. Down forward 2. Quarter circle back 2, rubber band attack. Quarter circle forward 3, Gengetsu. Down 1, hammer punch. Up back two, wrecking ball. Quarter circle back four, Kawada Goma. Back one two, double axe swing. Quarter circle forward two, Phoenix Smasher. Forward one plus two, Hammer of the Gods. Up forward three four, Shredder. Down back four, generic low kick. Sidestep three, pump and pedal. Magic four. So 1-2 is a very easily overlooked move in the move list. It's actually Paul's fastest move in the move list. And the second hit has abnormally long range for a basic jab string like this. So it covers a lot of distance, gets him plus six on hit, which allows him to frame trap most characters with things like down forward two, or allows him to apply his mix-ups afterward. The infamous Paul down forward two. This is a safe attack that launches standing opponents, but not when they are crouching and you can pretty much spam this move uh, offensively just get up close on the opponent and do it just close the space and just let it rip uh, defensively you can look to catch the opponent coming into aggressively or against certain characters you can actually use this to beat their jabs so really really good move and we'll talk about the uh, combos off of this uh, later on quarter circle back two this is 100 percent paul's best mid check you hear a lot about Paul's Death Fist, but at higher levels of play, this move is much more important. It has better tracking, it's totally safe on block. If the opponent hard ducks against this move, they are not going to get the rollback escape um, on the hit animation, so you can dash up and get a free down back two. Uh, you should be using this move very frequently with Paul. Quarter circle forward three, this is the main low to pair with quarter circle back two, so you have a constant threatening mix up working for you in neutral. Quarter circle forward three has huge range, incredible tracking, it crushes highs, it is zero on hit, and it leads to a huge chunk of damage on counter hit. Um, the only downsides to this move are that it is locked behind the crouch dash animation, and at minus 14, it can be launch punished by some characters. Down one, this move is going to be like your light version of quarter circle back two. It's far less damage, but you'll be able to get this out way faster and keep plenty of mid checks on the screen for your opponent to deal with. Um, once you get in on your opponent, it's very hard for them to get away from this move because of its range and its speed. Uh, when you hit this move, you'll be plus two uh, at a pretty decent range, and you can also recover crouching by holding down on this move. Up back two, this move is super insane. It has good range, it's safe on block, it's a mid homing move, cannot be stepped. It is a counter hit launcher that will lead to crazy damage. It knocks down a normal hit, and it even has some high evasive properties that will go under certain characters' jabs. This move is amazing. Use it very often. So back one, two, this is a versatile move with a lot of different functions. You can use the first hit kind of like a slow down but powered up jab. It has huge range. It's a true homing move, so they can't step this. And you can confirm the second hit in some situations. When you see that first one, tag them. You can confirm the second. Um, it's his go-to whiff punisher for small whiffs. If they're whiffing tiny things like down forward ones or jabs. 
You just tag him with this real quick, and it's also one of the best 12 frame block punishers in the game. An essential move. Next is quarter circle forward 2, the mighty Death Fist, or Phoenix Smasher. This move's primary function is as a whiff punisher. I was mentioning with the back one two, you know, this is your go-to for small whiffs. Quarter circle forward two is taking care of everything else, the medium sized whiffs and the big whiffs. Um, you just have this locked and loaded and it makes Paul really scary. Um, and I will mention if you wanna go super next level uh, for the really big whiffs, uh, you should actually be incorporating quarter circle back one plus two. That's just a, a little aside um, for his whiff punishment game. Back one two, Death Fist, and Corsicle Back 1 plus 2 pretty much cover everything. Next is Forward 1 plus 2, Hammer of the Gods. I love this move for the name alone, uh, but this move is essential because it is the only way to mid-check the opponent and keep your plus frames going. It forces Crouch and is plus 3 on block. It also has amazing range. Um, opponents who are challenging these plus frames, you can keep them in check with jabs, uh, with back one, or you can counter hit them with magic four. And this move is particularly nasty at the wall because it wall splats on counter hit, and on normal hit, it leaves Paul right in their face um, to go for his infamous Demo Man Death Fist 50-50. Up forward 3-4, the Shredder Kicks. This is a unique version of the standard hop kick because Paul doubles up his kicks while in the air. So this means that it covers more range than a normal hop kick and it has a longer window to crush lows. So this is an essential move to represent so you can resist the opponent's low pressure. It's great as a keep out tool. Um, and of course, because it's a launcher, it nets big damage for Paul. And it is minus 13 on block just like a normal hop kick. Down back 4, the generic low kick. So this move doesn't look like much, but it is actually very important for Paul. He doesn't have access to great, fast, high crush moves from standing. I mentioned how his up back 2 and his down forward 2 can beat some characters' jabs, but they aren't true high crushes that work against moves like EWGF, Magic 4s, other scary highs like that. So down back 4 allows you to annoy the opponent and resist their best high attacks. Um, and if they start pursuing uh, ducks and low parries on this small little low tap, then they're actually playing into Paul's game plan, which is to threaten with these big scary mid checks. Um, so this move is very useful, although it does look very modest and low damage. So next, sidestep three. This is a move that you will make use of a lot with Paul in matchups where quarter circle forward three feels a bit too risky. This one is only minus 12 on block. It gives plus four on hit and on counter hit, it's going to give a free back 1-2, which is insane damage. And so it's especially terrifying for the opponent when their back is against the wall, because it's going to leave Paul right in their face on hit, and that counter hit, back 1-2 guaranteed, is going to wall splat. Lastly, here is Paul's Magic 4. Uh, it launches on counter hit and is 12 frames startup. This move really rounds out Paul's counter hit game by allowing him to keep the opponent very honest even from small plus frames. For instance, if they block a jab or if they get hit by his down one. So we're going to see this basic formula here of launch, single hit filler, 3-2, backsway 4, run up, ender. Same thing here, only with the thruster as the first hit. I prefer to use the back 3 as the filler off down forward 2 just for consistency's sake. Um, but all these combos here, you have plenty of time to do the thruster. Uh, we're just going to keep seeing this basic formula. Launch, single hit filler, 3-2 sway 4, run up ender. We'll see it one more time off of quarter circle back 1 plus 2. So now we're going to look at the combo off of shredder. This back 1-2, that's going to be the most consistent option to combo here. You can do 3-2 Sway 4 for more damage, but you want to avoid that if you ever hit Shredder off Axis. It's not going to work. Here's a few miscellaneous combos. Here's the counter hit Magic 4. This 3-2 Sway 4 is not going to work unless you hit the Magic 4 up close. If we hit the Magic 4 from far away, we have to do Dash Up back 1-2. Last thing here, we're going to see the counter hit QCF3 combo. We can just go right into Demo Man. Or the advanced combo is instant while standing 3-2. So here's a combo to show off Paul's rage damage, but something very important at the end that's going to apply to all your wall carry combos. When you run up for this 3-2 sway 2 ender, press run up 3 plus 4 2 sway 2. That's going to prevent Paul's wall running 3 from coming out when you dash up for the wall ender. Paul excels in three very fundamental aspects of the game. Mix-ups, counter hits, and punishment. 
Paul produces powerful and rewarding mix-ups very naturally, with lots of range and good tracking. I'm looking to base my mix-up game around my jab, quarter circle forward three, and quarter circle back two, along with sidestep three, and my heavier mid checks, like forward one plus two, and up back two. As Paul produces these mix-ups, he incentivizes the opponent to remain defensive and keep on guessing, because if they misplace their counterplay options, they may swing into a massive counter hit. I'm talking about counter hit quarter circle forward three, counter hit sidestep three, counter hit up back two, and of course as you're going you're also putting big counter hit buttons on the screen like quarter circle back four, down forward two. Also, Paul heavily punishes misplaced attempts to resist these mix-ups from happening. For instance, if Paul blocks a YOLO hop kick, he can hit the opponent with one of the best 12 frame punishers in the game. And this is also going to apply when Paul baits out whiffs. If he creates a small whiff, back 1-2. If he creates a bigger whiff, death fist. Paul also has one of the absolute best throw games. 2 plus 4 back, down forward 1 plus 2, and back 1 plus 4. And he also has a uniquely powerful version of the ultimate tackle, down back 1 plus 2. This allows him to crack open overly defensive opponents. And lastly, Paul is among the most damaging characters in the game. His combo routes are stable, consistent, and highly damaging. And his rage mode output is without question top 5 in a game of 50 characters. So as for Paul's weaknesses, his high crush options can start to feel limited in certain matchups. His down forward 2, it's notorious for evading the jabs of many characters, however it's not a true high crush, so this is not going to be a reliable option playing around stuff like Magic 4, EWGF. Um, to play around these options, Paul has to rely on the more generic high crushes, things like generic low kick, crouch jab, or even more advanced options like flash ducking into while standing 3-2. Also, there are matchups where Paul's quarter circle forward 3, a centerpiece of his game plan, it can become a liability. For instance, characters like Jin or Bob who can launch this move on block, they can start to make Paul's low game feel limited and risky. He's forced to rely on other lows like sidestep 3, which is locked behind a sidestep, or back 4, which is slow and does not have a high crush property. Once again, I am Equinox Joey Fury here for Dashfight.com. You can also check out all the things shown in this video in the text version via the link in the description. If you liked this video, please leave a like or comment below with your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching.